Good morning, and welcome to Atheist's Talk on KTNF AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. Today is Sunday, December 22nd, 2019, and I'm your host, Stephanie Zavan. I don't have a guest for you today. Instead, we have the first part of a two-part holiday radio play for you this week. Part two will run next week. After the fun of last year's play, The Fall of Frosty, we brought Marissa Alexa McCool back to write and record a new show for us. You may recognize several of the voices as previous guests on our show. You'll definitely recognize some terrible television along the way. Without further ado, we present Have a Very Meta Christmas. So, it's the holiday season, I guess. Oh, great. I suppose that's why it's been so busy at work lately. It's a few days off work, if nothing else. You work from home, Darlene. What's your point, Thomas? I'm just saying, it's not like you have to go out and deal with the traffic, the lines, the parking, the same songs over and over again, the badly appropriated versions of those public domain songs for advertising jingles, and... I have to deal with them, okay? When? In my head, every time you bring them up. When did I bring them up? Yesterday, when your in-depth YouTube video analyzing the philosophical elements deployed in the most recent episode of your favorite show, Fancy and Ardenture, was interrupted by a Sprite ad that changed one word of some carol to make it spry elevant. Oh god, now you're doing it. What? What am I doing? Making up words to fit the content. This is your gender all over again, isn't it? Tom, I'd love to stay here and chat about your innate fear of anything that doesn't immediately make sense to you. Well, how can you say that? I was watching those philosophy videos like you said. And they certainly were challenging, if the only thing you knew about philosophy was that Noah Hawley refers to it sometimes as a vague concept. Your point? My point is, if you ever actually did anything to challenge yourself in any way, maybe clever... If grown-worthy advertising puns would be the least of your concerns. (sighs) Why do the holidays do this to us? I don't know. Maybe neither of us have ever appreciated being told how we're supposed to act for a calendar portion of the year. There's no rule that says we have to do that, though, right? Depends on your definition of rule, but I'll bite. What are you proposing? Okay, I don't feel like cooking a turkey, or a ham, for that matter. The most recent thing you cooked was reheated mac and cheese with Spam that you threw in a pan until it was black. Exactly! So, why bother ruining an actual animal that died for our sad, lonely plates? Tom, if you don't want to celebrate the holidays, fine. I don't either. Then why have we always... Humoring you? Humoring me? When we first got married, you were so excited about being able to buy your own Christmas tree that you brought one home that was eight feet too high for our living room. Okay, I still say you should have let me drill a hole in the second bedroom to let it through. We never use that anyway. Um, I use it for my office. Right, right, but you don't sleep in there. Neither do you, since you're asleep in front of your internet videos most of the time anyway. What are you saying? No, no, not saying it. Say it, Darlene. No. Say it! You'll get pissed off and complain that your fancy and ardenture friends all about them, about your ice queen wife all over again. Hey, I only did that sometimes. We're letting it all out anyway, so just say it. I'm saying at least the vibrations of your subwoofer on the surround sound gives me some kind of stimulation, which is more than you've done in a hot minute. Oh, wait until Brian and Dan hear about this. I hate you. My my friends hate you. And I hate the holidays. At least we're in agreement on something. 
So, no holidays or big meals or gift giving this year. I'll try to cope with the loss. Maybe you should go cope with the subwoofer. Maybe you should cope with letting me keep the house. Ugh, Star God. I can't bear to see two people so unhappy for the holidays. How can you see anything? We're beams of light flashing with voices. I didn't even know we had eyes. We're nothing more than solar Morse code. It was the 40s. We were on a budget. But isn't this usually our cue? Our cue? I don't think I ever did much, except be a galaxy that has a voice and stuff. Yeah, but I gotta go get my wings or something by showing them the true meaning of Christmas, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, go for it. Just be home by New Year's. Last year, I broke the pinball machine, and I had to spend New Year's Eve trying to talk to a Pegasus or something. That wasn't a Pegasus. That was the Andromeda Galaxy. Whatever. Half the people who believe I'm a talking flashy light god don't think the universe has existed long enough for this light to be seen by their eyes anyways. Should I threaten them with overdone cliché number one or overdone cliché number two? Why not both? Compliance. Wait. Was that a Flight of the Navigator reference? Affirmative. Holy mother of me, how do you even remember that? Disney Plus. Cool, just don't get caught in the theater alone again. What? Nothing. Go do the holiday thing. Are you watching Fargo again, Darlene? Yeah. Why? Uh, Have you seen Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Um, fair. Wait. What do you want, Thomas? Uh, I thought we should talk. For the last time, I'm not taking a holiday vacation with you. Okay, no, no, but you don't get it. It's not a holiday vacation in, like, we're going to celebrate it. It's just a vacation for us to get to know each other again that happens to be on the holidays when neither of us work. Not interested in spending the 36 total hours you get off work in the same place we always go, Thomas. I'd prefer to just sit here and fantasize that I could afford Nikki Swango's outfit some more, okay? And yet you criticize me for my unrealistic fantasies. To achieve any fantasies, you'd actually have to put effort into something. Did you order a stripper again? No, that was you. Oh, yeah. Anyway, what was that? It was I, Darlene and Thomas. Darlene, your stripper's here. That can't be her. She doesn't in any way resemble Gloria Burgle. You and that Fargo show. Better than fancy an Ardinger. Stop judging me for my happiness, Darlene. Both of you, stop fighting, please. This is supposed to be the happiest time of year where joy and goodwill reign. Not if you work in retail. Or hospitality. Or the service industry. Where's your holiday spirit, you two? Why have you fallen into such apathy about the best time of the year? And with each other? I don't know. Beats having expectations that never get fulfilled. You have to give me a chance to fulfill them before you dismiss me. Don't worry, I'll make room for you in between my podcast schedule and watching season three in slow motion. So... never. You're learning a lot today, aren't you? Whoa, 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 whoa. You two really need to knock it off before you completely ruin each other's Christmas, okay? Um, we're not celebrating Christmas. I mean, whichever holiday you celebrate then, I guess. Actually, we're not doing any of them. What? No holidays? Nope. Nope. How? What? I can't... What? What about your families? Just us, mostly. Our families live far away, and I'm not dealing with that traffic. Or the turnpike costs. Or them. But this is the time of year where you're supposed to be grateful for all you have and who you have it with. Nah. Nah? Yeah, I'm good. We're not really into the whole holiday thing. And if you're not the Fargo-themed stripper, what are you doing in our house? Fargo-themed... I mean, I've been sent to help the two of you learn the... True meaning of Christmas? Yes. Hey, you're not supposed to know why I'm gracing you with my presence. We're really doing this. Doing what? Let me guess. Next you're going to show us what it was like if we were never born? No, she's going to show us the past, present, and future if we don't change our heathenly ways. 
No way. She's definitely going It's a Wonderful Life. It's a holiday special. No, she's going Christmas Carol. Literally every show that has a holiday episode does it. Well, which is it, not Gloria? My name is Amy. And I'm not going to do either of those things. Ugh. Really? Then what are you doing? She's totally doing that. She's just got the big sad that we already know. Totally. I told you I'm going to show you the true meaning of Christmas. Were you not listening? Just take us to that spoopy, scary place where I'm supposed to feel bad that I wasn't born. I'm telling you, it's going to be the past. Shut up! In the name of Morse code, Star God, you two are intolerable. Your cliches are intolerable. They're not cliches. Not that you know of, anyway. You gonna get your wings if you turn us into happy holiday spirits or something? Gross, no. Why would I want wings? Do you see this bathrobe? I wouldn't be able to wear this if I had wings, and that would be terrible. Good, because we wouldn't be going if a bell ringing gave you magic flappy arms. Zuzu is an unfortunate name for a child. Probably grew up to be a Fargo-themed stripper. And Amy is probably short for Amethyst or some other strange stage name spelled with the wrong vowels. No! It's just Amy. With a Y. <sighs> Alright, time to send you to... To the past. Ha <laughs> ha! Got it! The past if we were never born? Drop it, darling. <laughs> nail it. I'll nail your... Please stay with us through the break, and we will return to Atheist's Talk and our radio play, Have a Very Meta Christmas. You're listening to AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Welcome back to AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. This is Atheist's Talk, and I'm your host, Stephanie Zavan. If you're looking to share part of your holiday week with other non-believers, Minnesota Atheists is hosting our traditional Chinese dinner on Christmas Eve. Check out our group on meetup.com for more information and to reserve a seat. You can find the meetup link on minnesotaatheists.org under Connect. We now return you to our radio play about the special meaning of the 1990s, or something. Have a very meta Christmas. Where the hell are we? Well, at least I landed on my feet. The rumors of your feet are highly exaggerated, Thomas. Hey, wrong universe reference. <clears throat> what? what? Welcome to the vision of holidays past. Here you'll discover what they were like when you were kids, and why it's so important that you keep alive the traditions you were raised on. This looks like a fake set. And is that a live audience? <laughs> Wait, this isn't Christmas past, it's a sitcom. A 90s sitcom. The kind you used to watch every year, and now you catch on TBS every four weeks when the syndication catches up to the holiday episode. Why would you send us here? Nobody liked the holiday episodes. They didn't? No. They were always so paint-by-numbers and hokey. Oh no, I guess nobody gets to celebrate Christmas anymore because other people exist. That means nobody else can have any fun ever. It's your childhood, now deal with it. Buckle up, bitches, it's time to have some sitcom. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, who gave you the authority to go to break? Last Christmas, she gave him his heart. I really just want everyone to lose Whamageddon. It doesn't count if it's a cover. Or does it? I left my good-looking dude behind after I caught him cheating with the secretary. And I'm a sensitive guy who wears cardigans, but deep down, I'm scared of commitment. In the most original Christmas story since Christmas itself. I'm a successful career woman who really doesn't need anyone to be happy, but yet... I feel such an emptiness. I have an eight-year-old who insists on being called by his full name and has a gluten allergy. No, wait, be careful, Joshua. That's not gluten-free. It's the most magical time of year. But will she get over her feminine destiny 
In time to put up the tree and give up everything? I know, I run a successful ad agency and I'm an Instagram influencer, but I really wish I could just ice skate and raise some mediocre guy's kids. I'm 28, a box boy still working at a discount warehouse store, and I never really grew up, but I'm a slacker with a heart of gold. This year, to save her from tears, she's going to settle. I now have no ambitions because I met the right man. Good luck raising my kid. I've got poker night with the boys. Bye! In theaters now. This holiday special is brought to you by WhiteTux.com. It's after Labor Day and you've decided on a shotgun marriage. But a black tux just doesn't fit your needs. Are you going to go to a professional who knows how to measure and fit tuxedos? Or are you going to waste their time making them measure you for free so you can give your sizes to someone else on the internet? WhiteTux.com. Making your poorly planned formal wear the reason a commissioned sales worker misses out on paying for their lunch this week. Remember to get a fedora with your white tux to show you're edgy for the status quo. Because in your head, that makes sense somehow. And now, back to the show. Okay, we're stuck in a 90s sitcom. It can't be all bad, right? I don't know. Let's turn on this TV. I can't think in the silence. Except for you. Uh, What the hell is this crap? I don't don't know! I just want to watch TV! Uh, Yeah, except these stupid people keep coming on and trying to sell us like shoes or something. No! 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 Seriously. I can't help but feel like this is where I started somehow. Uh. Nirvana kicks ass. <laughs> yeah! Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Rock and roll! <laughs> Settle down, Beavis. <laughs> Shut up, Bunghole! Uh. At least we know what the reliable tropes are going to be. And since we're a couple up in our room... That can only mean... What are you two doing up here all by yourselves? Yep. It's time to remember that not having sex equals purity. Did you just say the S word? Oh, you are so grounded, mister. You are not my real dad. We were just watching TV. Deborah, come look at what the kids are up to. Coming, Bill. Oh, come on, you two. I know you've been together since you were two, five, or twelve, depending upon what season it is. But you know this is inappropriate. Nothing happened. We just had on MTV and... MTV? That's the devil's channel. Next thing you'll tell me you've been watching The Simpsons, which any 90s kid would know is right next to Showgirls on the smut scale. It's not that. Why don't you just come downstairs? We're having a family meeting anyway. The Simpsons is like showgirls? It's the 90s, Darlene. We all knew most of our parents didn't let us watch it. In some cases, with excuses as tenuous as Bart calls him Homer instead of Dad. My parents didn't really care. Really? Yeah, I watched it after school every day. Well, aren't you just the rebel with the cause, Jane Lane? I don't know, Star God. I don't think they're going to get the message we're trying to send. I don't understand. It worked so well back in the 40s when we had to convince every privileged white man who took everything for granted that his life, too, was worth something. I mean, I guess people these days just can't handle timeless Christmas stories. No, there's always resistance at first. Whether it's an impudent rich white guy being confronted with death over not liking Christmas, or a down-on-his-luck white guy with a family that everyone loves wanting to jump off a bridge, they always resist during the first part of the revelation. You could be right. Maybe some good old 90s nostalgia will soften their hearts a bit. There you go. Now, get back to work. I'm playing Sonic. Is that a Sega Genesis? Of course it is. I'm Stargot. I can have anything I want. You could help me with this situation. You'll figure it out. Now, leave me to my mission. 
Okay. Now, which button makes you move faster again? Are we really doing this? You know we are, Darlene! You're not even my parents. No, but there isn't a set for your house, so we never met yours. Therefore, you're ours by association. And, Thomas, what kind of effect do you think this is going to have on your brother and sister? I'm an only child. <laughs> you know, no matter how many times you say that, it'll never be true. Kids! Are they in trouble again? I was fixing my hair. You're fat. You're gay. Yep, it's definitely a 90s sitcom. Mm -hmm. Enough, all of you. Please stay with us through the break, and we will return to Atheist's Talk and our radio play, Have a Very Meta Christmas. You're listening to AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Welcome back to Atheist's Talk on AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. I'm your host, Stephanie Zvan. Atheist's Talk is an unusual show. This week, it's even more unusual. Much of the work to keep us on the air is done by a dedicated group of volunteers, but we need your help, too. Today, we'd like to thank our supporters on Patreon in particular. If you'd like to make a tax-deductible donation to our radio fund, please visit minnesotaatheists.org or search for Atheist's Talk on Patreon and sign up for exclusive content. Atheist's Talk is produced with funding from the Minnesota Atheists, American Atheists, and Cucumbers Restaurant. If you'd like to advertise on this program, please contact us at radio at minnesotaatheists.org. Our music is composed by member Brent Michael Davids and used with permission. Opinions expressed on this show are those of the speakers or the characters. You can find Minnesota Atheists' public policy positions at minnesotaatheists.org. While you're on the site, check out our previous shows, browse our articles to see what we're up to, check out our meetup calendar, or sign up for a weekly email to find out about upcoming events and connect with other atheists. And consider becoming a member of Minnesota Atheists if you're not already. Support our work and help steer our future direction. We now return you to our radio play. Have a very meta Christmas. Aren't they, like, 26? Uh, what do you mean, Thomas? They, these siblings of mine are clearly in their 20s. And why does me and my wife watching TV affect them in any way? I know you two have been together for a long time, but you're still not married. Not until season 7, anyway. That's right. You have to wait until you're 18 and lived all your life in order for the network to find it appropriate. You're 25, Quinn. Shut up, Darlene. You're ruining my Christmas. I hope your Christmas gets eaten by elves. I hope you get a zit for Christmas. Rootin', tootin', trucks and shootin', everybody. You're not gonna believe what's happening. Oh, what is it, Eustace? Do people just wander into this house unannounced all the time like this? Of course. What else would they do? Everyone's gathering down at the city hall. They're saying that there there might not be a Christmas this year. <gasps> what does city hall have to do with there being a Christmas or not? It's it's like Stars Hollow. It's the only place in the world where anyone actually cares about local politics. Guess I won't be getting that football I want. I guess I won't be getting that makeover I want. Guess I won't be getting that hedge trimmer I want. <laughs> Yuck. Additional age and gender stereotype here. Same. Don't worry, kids. We're going to go down there and give whatever quirky inspirational speech we need to save Christmas. Is your name really Eustace? Okay, Amy. What are we supposed to be learning from this? I... <sighs> I mean, don't you remember back when everyone came together around the holidays and unified and remembering what was in the Christmas spirit or something like that? I don't know. You caught me off guard. You put us in this cliche-ridden hellhole, Amy. Look, you guys grew up in the 90s. You're used to the stock family, the stock characters, and the stock jokes. Yeah, gay jokes and fat jokes. All we need is Uncle Phil and a nerdy guy that nobody likes, but he seems totally unaware of how much everyone hates him. Must be nice to be that oblivious. Maybe I'm the nerd. You're not getting the right message about this. Ugh. It's like seven. I should be in bed by now. You go to bed at seven? I didn't think angels went to bed at all. 
Have you been outside? This is Minnesota. Who would want to stay awake? Still, seven? It's already been dark for three hours. I don't actually care. Go enjoy your sitcom climax and start thinking about the true meaning of whatever. I'm busy. Busy what? Getting off topic with another Amy or something? Hey, we were talking about your three layers of holiday vengeance, but then something came up about some dude at work in the elevator, and we've spent like three weeks being distracted by it. Oh, so business as usual. Ugh, shut up. This is why we don't let men speak on our show. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to blow into the cartridge, but it won't make it work again. Ugh, I gotta go. Star God confused Sega Genesis for a Nintendo again. Did they try turning it off and on again? How did you know God's pronouns were they? We cast a non-binary person as God, just like the main character was non-binary last year. As long as we're giving the religious something to be mad at, we might as well lean into it. Exactly. Hey, wait. Did we just agree on something? Don't push it. Now it's not even working. Check that it's plugged in. Hey, you're not supposed to be able to hear me. I'm just a flashlight light on a map. And the IT crowd is written and directed by a turf, so it no longer exists in this world. Alas, I am God. Bite me. So, what now? Uh, let's go hear some inspirational speech about why everyone should forget their differences and having a personality because a day says we should care, I think. That's what it'll be, right? It's a sitcom. All problems will be resolved within 22 minutes, and we'll never mention them again. Wait, that's it. What? That's our way out of this. What'd I say? If we delay the big magic speech and keep them from saving the Christmas they never lost, we'll all run out of time and be out of here. You're right. Christmas always comes in the end anyway. Unlike me. Hey! So we're basically going to filibuster Christmas? That... Sounds kinkier than anything I've done since we graduated college. Let's do it. Star God, these people are insufferable. I know. Now help me get untangled from this cord. How did you get yourself tied up in these anyway? They aren't even Christmas lights. Wait, you knew they were insufferable? Of course I did. Then why did you make me deal with them? You've met them. Yeah, I think I'm going to be an atheist now. An atheist angel. That'll be the day. Maybe you should drop yourself into City of Angels and see how fallen angels work out. I'm sure you're right. Oh, when you play the original Mario, make sure you pause when you jump over a hole. Why? Because it helps you move faster when you unpause the game. Toodaloo, Star God. I get to be a god and I don't even get a game system with Wi-Fi in it? What gives? I grew up in this town. All our children have played together since they were toddlers. I love it here. You love it here. None of us are ever going to leave, right? That's right. We shouldn't be tearing each other down. It's Christmas. It's time to come together and praise our non-specific religion and play a couple of public domain Christmas carols. You're gay. You're fat. Oh, you too. We love how you find those things to be punchlines. It's truly the heart of the 90s. So I say we stand up to City Hall and we tell them that their idea of supermaning the world in reverse to skip Christmas in order to avoid offending the city's token non-religious person we'll never met, we... Don't worry, everyone. Don't worry. We made it. Are you two here to save Christmas? How do I have a beard this good if I'm supposed to be 14? If you want to save Christmas, you'll all have to go out and wait at Public Square. Then what? Will we meet up with the mayor and discuss terms for an agreement? Where he comes to his senses and we all pretend to get along again? Sure. Whatever you want. In no way will you be met there by a guardian angel who needs to get her wings. I just need you all to take about three and a half minutes to do it. You heard him. Let's go. You see, Darlene, you really had a wonderful life. What the hell are you talking about? I I don't know. It felt in the moment. How do you think our diversion is going? 
I already have my wings. I just want to sleep. I'm not giving the rest of you a magical vision too. And sir, I would make fun of your neck waddle because I make fun of my own neck waddle, so it's okay. No, I do not want to hear a secret. Leave me alone. Uh-oh. It's 12.01. We didn't save Christmas. Oh no, I guess it's just December 26th now. Hey, you two were supposed to help with... Oh look, the credits. And the theme music. We made it through. Ugh, you two will not get out of the next one so easy. What, next is it gonna be that we were never born? And because of our lack of existence, everyone we ever met turns out awful? Wait, no. No, it's gonna be Christmas present, so... This was a sitcom, so... Hallmark, Hallmark movie. movie. You guys are the worst. Sprinkle, dinkle, glitter, dust, whatever. Next mission, please. Sprinkle, dinkle? That's the best you can do on our budget? You don't pay me anything. I'm Star God. All the donations go straight to me. Don't you know how prosperity gospel works? Will our heroes survive the next test of their lack of interest in Christmas? Will our angel get them to realize the true meaning of the holiday? Will Star God ever get the Nintendo running properly? Amy! When you pause over a hole, you just fall and die. Oopsies, my mistake. You are so going to hell. Do map Star Gods even have a hell? I'll make one up if I have to. Shut up. Find out when we come back after these messages. It's that wonderful time of year. Wake up! It's Christmas morning! Need coffee first. When couples reconnect. Oh look, honey! It's snowing! Uh, I'm just starting my first cup. Can we keep it down with the forced excitement? With what really makes the season bright. Come over here and look out the window, Janet! In a minute, I stepped in something the cat left. Not everyone can truly show how much they love their significant other at Christmas time. Are you ready now? Yes. Yes. <gasps> but for those willing to believe that this is a completely normal cultural expectation for working class people. Is that a brand new sedan covered in diamond rings and jewelry? Here are the keys. Christmas magic can happen. So, should I dress as a cheerleader, a cop, or a naughty nun this time? I was thinking of going around the world. Oh my. The Lexfinity Megajode, starting at just uh, under 739,000. Uh, yeah, do oh my. Other place in the because we can't car, stress like how much being cis and heteronormative so awesome. falls into our business model this time of year. This show is brought to you by StampsOfFargo.com. Are you in a rush? Do you wish you didn't have to waste your time trying to buy a worthless three-cent stamp from the post office? Did your brother trick you into trading your stamp collection for a Corvette, and now he's super rich, and all you have is just your very own Ele Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Wait, what? Why are you here? What are you doing? You're worried about money when Mary Elizabeth Winstead is at your side? What the hell is wrong with you? You shouldn't be thinking about stamps or your brother. Gosh, I hope you don't get caught up in some kind of symbiotic vengeance scheme that gets your ass killed by a shard of glass or something. Stampsofargo.com Seriously, get the hell out of here and never talk to us again. Previously, on Shenanigans. Hold B down, Mom. Me, damn it. And now, back to the show. You two may have figured out the rules of sitcom episodes, because honestly, it's not that hard. But you're never going to escape my next episode. God damn it. <laughs> the Hallmark movie. Didn't we already go over this? God, I hate you two. Please stay with us through the break, and we will return to Atheist's Talk and our radio play, Have a Very Meta Christmas. You're listening to AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Welcome back to AM 950 KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota. This is Atheist's Talk. We now return you to Have a Very Meta Christmas. Shut up or we'll tell Amy you didn't invite her this year. She's not supposed to know that. I told her the invite got lost in the Mormon mail. 
Mormon mail? It's like the post office, but for Mormons and Exmos, which you can avoid visiting at stampsoffargo.com. Unless you have a Mary Elizabeth Winstead, in which case you should just never talk again. Seriously. I mean, did you see those boots? Did I see them? I bought them. You did? Uh, I wish I could base my wardrobe on a calico cat and somehow be that amazing. You base your lifestyle on one, so you're halfway there. Ah, truth. Speaking of which, I need to go take my 16-hour nap. So, learn your lesson of what your world would be like in a Hallmark movie if you were never born. I thought it was Christmas present. It can't be both the Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life. That's against the Geneva Trovention Convention. I just received this message from Star God. Uh, you should hear this. Bite me. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that speaks for itself. Ta-ta. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go check out your closet. I didn't keep the boots in there. Look, Mom, I don't want to play with you anymore, because you don't ever hold B down to run, and your turn takes like four years. I don't know how we measure years up here. I'm a flashing map. Hey, Star God? Hold on. Mom's on the star phone. Yes. Yes. Yes, Mom, I'll make sure your favorite character is in the Hallmark movie. When has it not been? The deal I made in the Job bet? That's why. Okay, love you. Feed Wedgie for me. Bye-bye. Anyway, what? Is everything okay with you? Yeah, my mom just wanted to play with me, and I forgot how long those levels last if you don't die. Okay, well, why didn't you just pause it when she jumped over something? Because it was her turn. Works anyway. You mean, I could have been playing instead of watching mom do slow motion speedruns? How is it a slow motion if it's a... She never died, Amy. I don't have time for your semantics. I mean, semantics is literally all I do every week. Either your hopeless couple makes it through all three trials, or next time you have to play with her. You wouldn't. I could give John Willis your job. Oh my you, you wouldn't. Try me. You're the worst, Star God. Don't feel bad. You're the second best host on Secular Soup. You take that back. I'll run faster if I pause over a hole. Will I? (sighs) Be gone. I've got a switch now, and I don't need your nonsense. My son really wants one of those. Behave, or I'll make it not exist. Fine. Hallmark movie. Get on it. Okay, this doesn't seem so bad. At least it's quiet. Barely sunset and nobody's out in this town and there's a big snowy meadow over there despite it being like 50 outside right now. It could even be seen as a bit romantic. I suppose, if you had the right boots on. Maybe I will then. Don't push your luck. Oh, isn't this romantic? It's my hometown. I grew up here, though I haven't been back since I graduated high school. Gosh, I was so entranced with the big city life and having autonomy, but your simple way of life and your restored 86 pacer just might convince me to give it all up for love. I haven't even introduced you to my quirky Aunt Madeline with the one-eyed horse yet. I can feel myself losing my entire personality and all of my life goals in this romantic small town where everyone just has life simply figured out. And I can't wait until this ploy works, and I don't ever have to put effort into our relationship. Doesn't that sound familiar? Hey, I try. When you're on the couch, or when you're trying to make french fries by throwing raw potatoes in an iron skillet. Hey, it could have worked. It's a frying pan, isn't it? It might have worked if you hadn't put the skillet in the dishwasher. Oh, oops. Hi, strangers. What seems to be the quarrel? Who the hell says quarrel anymore? Oh, don't be silly. Everything can be resolved with a bowl of soup and lighting up a Christmas tree in this town. Why don't you join us at the only pub in town where mysteriously nobody drinks alcohol? It's my favorite place already, and I've never been there. I'm so proud of how quickly you're becoming a reflection of me. We know our audience. Let's adopt a pet from the shelter afterward. Oh, we are not doing this. Oh, yes, you are, or you'll be stuck here forever. Fine. 
how bad can pub ginger ale and cold french fries be? At least they know how to make them, Thomas. Shut up, Darlene. Hey now, none of that nasty swearing language in our town. It's like you're from here already. When should we get married? But you didn't even propose yet. I'm thinking Christmas evening would be so romantic. That's tomorrow. Look at you. You're so smart for a girl. It's like Mama always says, why buy the cow when you can raise them and marry someone to milk it for you? I'm a quirky but lovable career executive, but this sounds like where I'm meant to be. This is Eustace, my favorite bartender. He's handsome and has known me since I was a kid, despite appearing to be about 28. Well, golly, the rest of the world seems to keep growing and I stay the same age, pouring ginger ale and serving grilled cheese at this here town pub. Gosh, you sure have small town charm. Long as you don't ask for anything fancy, like a semen latte or something, I'll serve you anything you can buy out of a can, but in a country glass so it feels more homey. Can a sister get some Cabernet? What? Well, slap my sister and call me your mister. I haven't been asked for that since the ungodly 1970s. Uh, that was before St. Reagan gave the gays AIDS and made Christianity the national religion again. The good old days. <sighs> I no longer have any big city values because of this charming pub. I hope we never eat anywhere else again. Well, other than when you have all meals on the table for me by the time I get home. That too, you silly goose. Amy, you've got to get us out of here. You two are so smart, you figure it out. How could this get any worse? Dad and Madeline. Spoke too soon. Oh, we chose the same place. How delightfully unexpected. In my day, the only transport was horse and sled, and my old butterscotch still keeps me going every day. Wait, isn't your name Deborah? What do you mean, child? And don't call me child, I'm a grown woman. Why, everyone looks like a child in my age. Are you 150 years old? That's hardly appropriate to be asking such a wonderful woman. That's right. And Jake, that's why I married your father all them years ago. Your stepmom can also be your Aunt Madeline, right? That's too many cliches in one. She's magical. She defies the rules and what everyone thinks. Besides, she's not my stepmom. She's just my mom. But but that that's your mom, who's also your aunt. We just always call her that because that's how the town knows her. Your little girl brain catches on so quick. Here's a head pat. I in no way find this demeaning. I'd like to thank our audience for tuning in to Atheist's Talk. Please join us again next Sunday for the inspiring, really? Surreal conclusion of Have a Very Meta Christmas. Have a great Sunday. <laughs>